The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome, everyone, to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And as we start to show off, the S&P's off 12. Uh, the Dow's down 87. NASDAQ's off 42. The Russell up almost 4, 376. Uh, on other things going on out there, gold's up about t 10 bucks, 1322. Still at, in kind of in this trading range. Uh, silver a little better off, up a little over 1%. Platinum up, up 1.4%. And Mr. Copper, not looking good. Still under that $3 mark uh, where you really see the bull market start in that uh, $2.85 and six tenths of one cent. Uh, what else do we have happening? Well, just kind of a weak day uh, pushing down so far. When we look at the volumes on the day, we're about 4.1 billion shares. So a whole lot, no. Very light, no. Kind of in the middle. Uh, there's a couple of ETFs and indexes that are right on the line, which is uh, kind of what I like. Because uh, you could step in there and have incredibly tight margins in a market that's very cho choppy. So we see a few of these things uh, pop back in before the end of the day. That tells you one thing. Uh, they lose it. That tells you yet another. So uh, eh, we'll see how the end of the day comes in. I thought maybe we'd get a little bounce today. You still may get one before the end of the day. Uh, we're going into fund buying, of course, at the end of the week. You know, normally get a couple of days with some push down um, before, like we're having today. I thought maybe we'd start leveling out. The uh, pricing of some rather large uh, IPOs starts tomorrow night and Wednesday night. There's going to be more than a couple. So we need to see exactly how that's going to sort itself out. Uh, and uh, that's about it. We've got kind of a quiet week. Um, we'll look at what other earnings are coming out, but I really didn't see anything that I thought would move the market as much as some other stuff. So eh, what do we got? Well, eh, kind of a hurry up and wait. If you ever been in the military, that's it. Hurry up and wait. Get ready to go. You can give me a call at 877-927-6648. You can email me at pathtfnn.com. And of course, you can always leave a message in the den. First question of the day is, what do I think today's going to do? I think the S&P could end up closing flat out here. I think this is a lot of jitter, but it doesn't have, at least so far, uh, the smell of blowing up, which I thought maybe we would have. Um, now, maybe that changes before the end of the day, and of course, the last 30 minutes are always the most important of the day. That's where the big volume comes in. We see what the big whales are doing, not us tiny little minnows in the great ocean. You know, I love the fact that they named the uh, boat in uh, Gilligan's Island the minnow. This seems rather appropriate, doesn't it? Yeah, you never know. Uh, anyway, uh, what else is happening? Uh, Apple is out doing their little dance on the catwalk on the catwalk, doing their little dance on the catwalk, uh, and releasing their new streaming service. And of course, uh, they kind of ran it up into this, and now I eh, wouldn't be surprised to sell a little bit of the news. Uh, and of course, the market getting a little weaker at the same time. So we shall see. And uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, again, volume not all that exciting. Does that mean that we couldn't move up a little bit more or down a little bit more? It could be. Dollar is right underneath that uh, 96 level, but still in this kind of trading range, 95.95. 95. 
and a half, which is down about two tenths of a percent, 19 cents. Uh, so is there anything to really hang your hat on here? No, some of the weaker stocks continue to be sold off and uh, we'll kind of look at that. But a couple of them look like maybe they could bounce over the next few days. So we'll get an idea on that. And uh, well, I've got a request to look at Apple and some of the other stuff. So we will do that. Also have a request to look on Intel. And we will do that too in the next segment or maybe in the end of this segment. Let's get our history in for the day. And then you know what we'll do? We'll move on. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1957, France, West Germany, Italy, and the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, God, I gotta remember Luxembourg, uh, sign a, I, I walked across it about five minutes. It's that big. Uh, a treaty in Rome establishing the uh, European Economic Community, uh, also known as the Common Market, the EEC, which became in operation in January 1958, was a major step in Europe's movement toward economic and political union. And, of course, uh, later uh, this grew into the uh, euro zone. Uh, but, you know, they really wanted everybody to exact have the same laws, everything else. And I think in the end, uh, the common cur currency uh, and uh, laws that are the exact same all over the, the euro is the intimate demise because people are a lot different. Uh, the areas are a lot different and they need different uh, a different governing body or at least somebody that represents them. Uh, the EU is kind of destined to fail because basically what happened was uh, whatever your local representative was supposed to do means nothing to a bunch of people that are just appointed over in Belgium uh, and, uh, and kind of destined to fail or become a, a giant, uh, a giant, uh, you know, what would you call it? Uh, I, I want to say communism on a little better level but it just seemed like no matter what happened you were just screwing over people in one place to have another place uh, and of course uh, having uh, the same laws in every country always kind of tough I uh, always marveled at the Vatican where the age of consent is 12 never knew that the Vatican was the uh, was the Alabama of Europe but apparently it is um, and on the state, apologies to people from Alabama, I like this, I like the state. Um, on this day in 1957, and kind of the predecessor to the EU uh, got started. When we come back, we'll uh, look at Apple, then we'll go to Intel. Still have plenty of time to call me at 877-927-6648, and then we'll get in with a lot of stocks and charts of the day. Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And as we uh, come back, uh, first thing we want to look is Apple. Um, kind of a sell the news, I think, and of course, a little bit of the weakness in the general markets. Um, I don't think that there's that much uh, to be had in Apple. Um, I've said this for two years, and they've tried, you know, the video streaming service and didn't get any spin. Apple absolutely destroyed the music business. And they kind of act like they didn't. Now, maybe someone else is going to come along. Uh, but Apple used its uh, position to screw over a lot of folks. Uh, and for the last two years, maybe even three years, as Apple's tried to get into the video business, um, most of those people that were screwed over took ads out in Variety Magazine, which is kind of the magazine of Hollywood. Um, and the music people uh, got their licks in. <laughs> Don't you like that? You see what I did there? Um, Anyway, they got their licks in and uh, warned everybody in Hollywood about, uh, I can't say that. A lot of things I'd like to say, that, eh, just couldn't get them by the censors, I don't think. Uh, but, uh, you know, basically saying uh, these guys screwed us over. They screwed us over on music. They changed everything and they destroyed the business. We're making about one-tenth the money we made uh, in 2006. Uh, before the iPhone really came out. iPod was okay, but as soon as they got the phone and everybody had one device, that was it. They absolutely, instead of selling an album for 15 bucks, you sold one song and you got 99 cents. The artist may have gotten a quarter. So there just wasn't any money to be made. You buy somebody, you buy an, somebody's album, uh, then maybe you're going to go to the concert, everything else. So the whole ripple thing was a ripple down or trickle down thing was horrific for the music business, uh, much less the incredibly poor way uh, that uh, everybody in that industry was uh, treated. So this is like the third time Apple's come around and tried to make a streaming service. Uh, they've had Apple TV for a while. And of course, their answer, uh, their uh, uh, trying to push a credit card, uh, which is like the second or third time around on that one. And eh, let's call it the third time around. So you've got kind of 
all those issues coming back into it. Um, and that's about it. Anyway, uh, that's it for Apple. Uh, support comes back in at about 184. But I think there was a lot of sell the sizzle, not the steak. You got the steak today, and I think a lot of people, especially over the weekend, I saw some of those ads uh, targeting anybody that wanted to do business with Apple and warning them uh, of the dreadnought uh, that would crush them uh, if they let it be. Okay. Uh, next, we go on to our question from Pete in San Francisco that wanted to look at Intel, INTC. Um, as I said, in the very short term, there was a bounce coming into Intel because they got a CFO to become a CEO, something I desperately hate in the long term. In the short term, it always means the stock probably hangs out and goes sideways. Uh, sometimes investors like that in a way that they can get out and hopefully sell their shares uh, to uh, the bigger fool that comes along. Intel, not a bad company, not going out of business. Uh, just think of 2005 to 2013 or 14 of Microsoft just going sideways. They had somebody who really wanted to do something with the company. I uh, like the direction he was taking. Uh, they dredged up something 10 years ago, uh, and the CEO, in a, almost a Game of Thrones-like uh, position, actually did crush uh, the uh, CEO for something that happened 10 years ago and got him tossed out and then got appointed temporarily and now permanently. <sighs> Weasels like that, yeah, you just know eventually... It, Eventually, all comes crashing down. So I'm not a very, uh, I was fairly bullish on Intel for a while, uh, but their decision to uh, have poor leadership, um, and in fact, they couldn't even find somebody else uh, to take the job because everybody was afraid that exactly the same thing would happen to them, and that would be they'd find anything they could to get this guy uh, to get a new CEO thrown out and a new one put in uh, that was probably the same guy that's there now. So if you love boardroom controversy, maybe this is a stock for you. If you want to think this thing's going to 75, man, they got a lot of neat products, uh, but this guy is killing off the ones that would probably do well. I just say that uh, until they get rid of uh, the current CEO and we'll replace him with somebody that is a tech savvy risk taker, the chance of it going up significantly, probably not huge. Uh, weasels are a popular farm animal. I didn't know that. I always thought that they were vermin like, but uh, you never know. Everybody's got a ferret now. I know that. Is it a ferret a weasel? I don't think so, is it? Yeah, we'll find out. Okay, so we got Intel, we got uh, that for Pete. Again, not a big fan. Uh, to, 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 well, we're kind of continuing to slide. And I got some stocks that probably should have been down back to their previous lows, and they are not. We'll have to wait and see what happens at the end of the day. But certainly we continue to slide. Um, and another point there, 2785 on the S&P cash. So, yeah. what else do we have? Wanted to go look at some scans from last week. Take a quick look at them. We'll go through some of these. Wanted to see if some of these stocks have started to, to a bottom. Uh, applied uh, Optoelectronics AAOI. Uh, going below the previous February 26th low, $12.90, got into that with 1 million shares, so about a little more than fourth of the volume on Friday. Today, down with 550, uh, 570, yeah, 577,000 shares. This is a business that's always feast or famine, and right now it's famine. Uh, let's see about other ones out here that we want to look at. I'll go through them as, first, as much as I could. Um, again, uh, with 
kind of thinking that we get a bounce before the end of the day. We shall see. And maybe we close up there at 2,800. Just kind of feels like they're kind of trying to push out these trades now. I don't see the volume of the energy behind it. It's not like it's vapor. I'm going to say it's 100% chance of a bounce, but it just seems kind of that way. Maybe this is where it starts. We're right around that 230 area. We're the ramp for the end of the day, and a few of the buy orders could come in. So we'll keep an eye on we're going to go to a break. When we come back, we'll look at a bunch more stocks. I hear the music. Oh, the beautiful music. We'll be back. Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TF and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Yeah, we're a couple points up off the lows now in the S&P cash, still down 12 and a half points. Uh, the Dow, let's update that, uh, now down 85, NASDAQ down 44 and the Russell up 1.4 so still the strongest of them all again I suspect this is a little jitters uh, going into what we have uh, in the next few days which is IPO pricing and then of course we get to Friday we get uh, fund buying started so kind of a little bit of a washout question is going to be what happens I think next week after we get the IPOs out 
whether or not we, how far we get back up into the highs. But I do think now that we've got at least the economic conditions uh, to run back up in the highs. The Fed kind of out of the way. Uh, they're going to be uh, some wind in our sails. Uh, the political intrigue uh, of uh, the nothing burger that came out over the weekend. Um, so really, we have one thing, and that's the trade issues going forward. And of course, the political issues in the rearview mirror make that trade issue uh, actually probably become a lot more probable uh, than the cloud that's been over our heads for a while. Um, you know, if I was in China, I'd probably do the same thing, which is wait, not really negotiate, and maybe things, maybe the ball bounces our way, we get a uh, weaker um, president or something. I mean, if you're reading the headlines and you're Chinese, maybe that's the way you think. Now they can't think that way. They know they're going to have to deal with somebody uh, or face eventual tariffs uh, and a much stronger bargaining position today. So. The question is, uh, how long does it take to get this deal done? Probably a lot less than it did a couple of days ago. And so we'll see. Anyway, um, we are right at levels, like I said, that make this kind of a do or die in a few of these indexes. So I think today we close at 2,800 or a little above on the S&P cash. I think we've got uh, just a little push each day, but it's not uncommon for the stock, uh, for at least the people in the stock market, the big men of Wall Street, to save a lot of cash to gin up the market into IPO fever, especially when they have huge IPOs. They make more money off of uh, mergers and acquisitions and IPOs than they do on everything else, which is the dirty little secret. Their business is not to make you rich. Their their business is to sell paper or put companies together and get a big hunk out of it for themselves and other things. Now back to the charts, already in progress over most of TFNN. And we're back up to 27.90 and a half. Uh, wanted to look at Accenture. Uh, again, I, I know how weak uh, these run-ups from December 26th have been. We should have probably had some significant closes. We should have seen some volume come in. We have not seen that, which suggests that you at least get yet another um, bite at the Apple, not Apple computer, but just an Apple. Uh, in Accenture, uh, I suspect maybe you get one more chance at that December 4th high. That's 168.37. Uh, that came in with 3 million shares. You tested it with 2 million shares. Kind of came down up on Friday a little bit, a little bit today, but not much juice so far. So the question is whether or not uh, you can get some volume the next time up through 168. It may not. You know, most of these companies are stalling out at these levels, by the way. Uh, same thing with Amazon. When we look at it a couple of times into 170 or no, 1,780, yeah, 1,778 which is the December 3rd high. But there was one a couple of about four bucks lower that the same volume on November 8th. So you went through it without a sign of strength, i.e. big candle and some volume over the last four days. On Friday, it was down on about the same volume. Today, a little lower, 3.7 million shares so far. So you're not getting a lot of clues, but certainly not a lot of technical damage yet today. Uh, to, to, to got a question. What happened on Friday? Why the sell-off? There were a lot of people running around planting rumors, and a lot of people were spooked when the uh, news came out that the Mueller report had been delivered. Everybody saw a boogeyman under the, uh, under the covers. I think that was partly it. We'll know if the market shrugs it all off in a day or so. Uh, Kay from Maryland. Uh, I want to short this stock. What do you know about it? S-H-O-P. Um, well, a few things. Shopify uh, is a uh, company that actually TFNN uses. Uh, they're kind of a back end for a lot of websites that want to sell stuff. Um, and you know what? Um, so far, 
good is that they're easy to, to move your company into. Uh, the bad is that they're not probably as configurable as a custom solution, but that kind of makes sense, right? You've got something that works for a lot of people, but may not have just the kind of features that you want. Uh, but if you want to have something set up that's fairly easy and for them to take care of most of the work of doing stuff, not a bad company. Um, I'm not exactly sure why you want to go short. Maybe another email would tell me that. Um, what you're looking for in this one, if you wanted to go short, would be a close back above a nine day or three by three displace moving average. Let's do that so you can see the same thing. You've got your close below the three by three, right? One, one uh, day above it, then the next day below it would be the trigger. Um, the problem is that you've got, you know, about 15 bucks to the downside, which is about 86 bucks. Um, I don't see that much in the way of massive downside. I think there are a lot of stocks that are worse off. But yeah, could you get to 186? I think you could on Shopify. But uh, that's it. Uh, to, to, let's go to, uh, thanks Kay from Maryland. Although I think she's moving to North Carolina, she said last week. Let's get through a lot. Let's get through some of these migrations. Okay. Um, and yes, Apple became come a bank. I'm watching a few of these things run across the uh, the uh, headlines. Okay. Okay. Yeah, let's go to the next one here. Arista Networks, another one that rang the bell, and that was the 4 million share high of August 24th. That was $313 on that day with, like I said, 4 million shares. Got into it with 1.66 million shares. Pulled back um, the next day on just 460,000 shares. Today, got about the same thing, 460,000 shares. Now, you're just back into the trend line on the way back up. So not a lot has happened yet. Uh, let's turn that off here. Uh, and you would really want to think this thing trends. My guess is if you really bearish, you get one more push up here over the next week or so, and then the market falls apart. Now, I think that a lot of the tax selling... Oh. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. We're slowly climbing back up. Like I said, I kind of just felt like this thing's going to close around 2,800 on the day. We'll see how the last 30 minutes come in because, of course, that's when the pros do their market on closed orders. But it just doesn't seem like they'd go trying to press um, pricing on these IPOs if they thought the market was going to be too weak. They'd put it off a week or two weeks or whatever. And it, certainly everything I read says that this is still coming down the line. So, you know, get rid of all the weak hands in the market that you can, which is normally what they'll do. Uh, and then, of course, you get a lot of people short. You just kind of move the market up for a little bit. Shorts cover. Everybody feels like uh, it's uh, happy days are here again. They price the IPO. Sometimes it sucks all the air out, and then you want to short. But uh, until I hear some better uh, information, it still looks like it could be four days or five days at any point from the start of a move higher that we could be back up at those uh, 2950 levels um, if they push hard enough. Now, maybe, like we said, maybe you get up there and there's nothing, but maybe you get up there and all the volume comes in, trade deal comes on, and everybody does start singing happy days are here again. Aspen Technologies, A-Z-P-N. We see January 24th, 103. 48, uh, one and a half million shares, got into that on March 21st with uh, 550,000 shares, so about a third back into the uh, trading range. Not a lot of volume on the downside on Friday. Uh, today, 336,000 shares so far. Um, there is a thing I learned from uh, Tim Ord, though, early on, and that is that the longer stocks hold up at previous highs, the more likely they're going to want to do things. One, gap up and away. Or two, at least go up there one more time and and spike and have a big interday candle that closes lower and gives you the signal that everything is going to fall apart. I do not see that. Uh, got some questions about what's going on in Boeing. Um, you know, you've had a fairly decent run back down here to 360, mostly on the uh, crash news, uh, and some people asked me why, uh, and emailed me over the weekend about why I'm not so, uh, so much thinking that this is the end of the world for a Boeing company. One, they've got an excellent safety record. Uh, when we think about how many people have died in jet crashes, uh, compared to even 20 years ago, it's like a fourth. Um, and are they responsible for this? They can be, they can't be. There's about four times as many flight hours as the ones in the United States uh, that are uh, then compared to the ones in uh, third world countries. Uh, but basically we've got both plane accidents in third world countries where a lot of the options for safety equipment uh, would uh, the, the airlines would not pay for. So Boeing didn't put it on. Um, a lot of that safety stuff is what they call an angle of attack indicator that's probably the problem here, which tells you how fast and hard at what angle uh, you're flying in 
to the wind on. Uh, all the ones in the United States have two angle attack, and if they don't both agree, uh, the system for create, uh, stopping stalls turns off automatically. So you may have a, a five seconds or so in the United States of one having, but uh, apparently there wasn't a lot of discussion. And one of the reasons why there wasn't a lot of discussion in the third world is they didn't want to tell pilots, hey, we weren't going to pay for all these new safety devices. And uh, so there, uh, we got kind of a stripped down model, got, uh, got the rubber floor mats, uh, doesn't have carpet, roll up and down windows. It's not that bad, but that's kind of, from everything I've read so far, that's kind of uh, the homing in. And of course, they've got new software uh, that they've thoroughly checked that comes in, I think, on April 10th. So we're not that far away from it. Certainly, we're back to this big gap up that goes back to the 30th of January, which is about uh, almost 13 million shares. Now, you came down on heavy volume of about 34 million shares. But since then, it's been pretty light. Today, again, an opportunity to blow out the lows. Uh, you had 10 million shares on Friday. Today is 5.6 million shares. So certainly had the uh, ability to blow through these. And if the market tanks, you could probably say that Boeing uh, could take the next ladder down. But I think right now, unless the market does tank, we start closing, uh, well, we're at uh, 27, uh, 94 and a half now. If we get up that 2,800 level, I suspect that uh, Boeing, while you may not want to buy it yet, uh, probably has faced the worst of its storm. Uh, as long as the market's with it, I think you're, it's okay. Uh, to, to, to do what else do we have? Okay, get a free French dip sandwich at Arby's. I don't know how that got into this email, but that's it. Okay, good enough. I need to forward that to somebody. Give me a call at 877-927-6648. Anyway, we had Boeing. Let's go to BPR, which is Brookfield Property REITs. Um, certainly these are looking a lot better over the last two or three weeks. These looked horrible. Uh, they didn't fall apart like I thought they would. Um, mostly because the Fed got pushing this. February 12th, though, $20.37, 3.14159, I almost remembered all that from Pi. Uh, million shares, we'll call it 3.14 Pi shares. Uh, back into it, went above it on March 21st with 2.67 million shares, so a little light, but a pullback. And again, today, so far, a doji and not a lot of juice. So again, we had the opportunity for everybody to come back from a week where everybody had the jitters going into Friday and a possible uh, overthrowing of the government uh, and uh, eh, the storm that did not come. Uh, now, here's one that I find kind of interesting, and that is that you've had a couple of gaps down uh, in the Brazil bull 3X shares. This is BRZU. Had a gap down on Thursday. Friday, you came down, still had more volume. Today, though, a little bit less. Uh, you've got a gap at about 26, so you still have a little, little bit of damage that could still come out there. But... Um, not a lot of follow through today, which is kind of interesting with the push down earlier in the day. 2793 on the SP cash. Okay, so what else do we have? Oh, keep an eye on that one. B, C, D, Brasilia, another Brasilia stock, uh, actually coming back to support levels. This is back to the gaps back higher uh, on the 10th of January. 868,000 shares back then. Got into it with 1.39 million shares. So you have to kind of watch out. Still, I don't know that about Brazil right now, but it's probably all about uh, commodity pricing, which is what it's always is in Brazil. To, to, to Continental building products at a 4,100. Uh, no. Oh, there we go. We'll be back in just a second. Close the show out with a few more. 
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Okay. Yeah, let's take a quick look at Microsoft, we'll look at some of the biggies out here today. And, uh, want to get to uh, talking in eh, just a couple of minutes we've got down here about earnings, which I haven't gotten to yet, so we want to do that. Okay. Um, to, to, to Red Hat, which is, of course, being bought out by IBM, so I don't know if there's a lot there after the bell tonight. Uh, we get into tomorrow morning. It's Carnival uh, Cruise Lines um, right before the bell. Fact set research. Again, none of these going to move the market. Probably more interesting to me is after the bell, um, and that is KB Homes on Tuesday. Shoe Carnival. I never thought that a carnival and shoes went together, but apparently that is a thing. I've been into them. It's got like kind of a huckster thing going on. Wednesday morning, we've got Lennar Homes uh, at Home Group, Paychex. Um, that pretty much is a great deal of it. Lulu Mon after the bell on Wednesday. Thursday, we get to Accenture. Uh, to, 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 I think that's about it before the bell. And after the bell, a whole lot of nothing. Friday morning, we get into BlackBerry, if you remember that company. Uh, CarMax eh, on Friday. So again, not a lot happening this week that I think is going to move the market. Uh, certainly not any of the big stocks. Uh, as we said uh, before the break, we were looking at Microsoft, 
did go over the previous high of 70 million shares with 29 million shares back into the trading range. But here's where you wanted to see this thing back in and some volume today. You have not gotten it. Um, this is where the rubber meets the road. And you didn't have much rubber or road either one. Uh, not a big fan of shorting Microsoft. I do think eventually you get it back at 100 bucks, though. But uh, that may be a while, maybe a long while. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. We will be back. I shall return tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat channel.